What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Sequence. I am your host, Trevor Plouffe, and today we have a very special guest on uh, the 2019 Silver Slugger Award winner for catcher. Your stats are by far the best of any catcher in 2019. We got Mitch Garver of the Minnesota Twins. What's up, Mitch? How you doing, man? What's up, Trev? Good to be on here, brother. I'm, ha I'm happy that you agreed to come on the show. And I kind of laid it out. I said, hey, we want to go over a few of bats and do you use um, at bats to go back and try to get that proprioception back? Like, do you do that? And you're like, yes, I do. And I got a bunch of them. What do you need? Uh, you listed about three or four at bats and we kind of handpicked a, a couple of them. Why, why these two at-bats? So this, this Lou Trevino at-bat against Oakland was, it was, it's tough, dude. He throws 98 mile an hour bowling balls with a really good breaking ball and it goes straight downhill. And so I picked these two at-bats because uh, just where I was at, like in my season. So when, when Oakland came to town, I was really, really hot this series. I think I had two or three homers. Uh, but this at bat was huge because we were up four to three in the eighth inning, um, and really just attack on another insurance run because I think the guys they had coming up it might have been Chris uh, Chris Davis and you know if, uh, Chad Pender maybe but there are a few guys coming up that were like all right we have a home run threat here in a tie game or up by one so as a catcher adding that insurance run to go into the ninth inning is just huge you know it takes a huge weight off your shoulders. And so for me to be a part of that in this at bat was was really good, and then the, the Toronto one against Aaron Sanchez. I don't know something about going in Toronto, dude. When I hit there, oh, like yeah. I just see the ball great, and if and if I'm in a slump or I'm struggling or I just don't feel like myself, like going to Toronto for some reason just gets me right. It might be the chicken fingers in the hotel <laughs> for real, but <laughs> the bomb um, shelter of a visitors clubhouse down there. Yeah, dude. I don't know something about it. it just, it just yeah. makes me want to play good baseball there, but yeah, we'll, we'll go through them and I'll kind of tell you what I was, what I was thinking at the time. Cool. Yeah. And you know, your, your approach, you know, I've been a fan of your approach. I've been a fan of yours um, since you've been up with the twins and you see it all through the league, guys have different setups. And I think the guys that are most successful usually have kind of the simplest of setups because you're able to repeat it. And kind of, that's what I see with you. You're able to generate a ton of power. I mean, 31 home runs in 93 games. That's, that's something right there. But you do it quietly and you do it simply. Is this something that you've always done or is this something that you've worked on and had to change over the last couple of years? So every year I've added something new, like how do I get better at one specific thing? And coming out of college, I could always hit for contact. My college head coach, Ray Birmingham, is a great teacher of hitting. Uh, he always taught me to be short to the baseball, that, that you know A to B was the quickest way to get there and stay inside the ball. And all these things that I learned throughout college were probably one of the bigger reasons I got drafted because I wasn't great defensively. So I got drafted as a hit first catcher. Um, I started coming up. And like I said, every year kind of learn something new. I got to double A. Doug Mankiewicz was my manager. Mm -hmm. So him and Tommy Watkins, well, Tommy was our hitting coach. So him and Tommy like worked together with us all the time. And he was so dedicated and he loved, you know, hitting early on the field. And he was the guy who taught me how to like get my hands back. Right. So like mm -hmm. getting that separation between your hands and your hips and, you know, creating force that way. That's in 2016. That was really when I started driving the baseball. Uh, and then I got, you know, and I made it to AAA in, in 2017 and Chad Allen was my hitting coach. He was probably there when, when mm -hmm. you were with the twins as well. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he taught me some things as well, as far as like approach and how to go about your games. Cause when you get up to that AAA level, like you're facing more major league talent and you know, everything just kind of came together at the right time, um, for this, for this past year. And I mean, we want to talk about exactly what I did in the off season before last you know, really, I, I had like two things in mind. I wanted to drive the baseball and I want to drive it in the air pole side. Because if, if you look at if you look at the numbers across the league, like the percentage of home runs that are going to the opposite field throughout the past 10 years is like 10 percent. Right. And then sure. it goes to a little bit smaller to center field. And then the vast majority of home runs are a pole side. I was like, OK, what do I need to do to get that path right? What do I need to do? And and, you know, I. I made a few small adjustments with, with my guy, Jason Columbus, out in Houston and had a great year. 
That's awesome. Oh. You had an excellent year. You know, you you really remind me um, hearing you say that about the pool side. That's that's a Brian Dozier. He lives by that statement. That is a Dozier thing right there. And yes, sir. Uh, you know, it's easy to say, "Hey, I'm going to go pull the ball in the air," but if you're not trained to do it properly, you're going to be exposed. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything on the outer half is going to be death to you. So you really, if you just say, I'm going to go pull the ball, you have to learn how to do it the right way. And when I see you taking your swings, uh, you, you, you do it. You do it the right way because you're keeping your hands tight to the body. You're not just hitting the outside part of the ball. Like you're still hitting the inside part of the ball, but you're extended on it. Right. And it's, um, you got to be taught that. You can't just wake up one day or you got to work on it. You can't just wake up one day and say, I'm just going to pull the ball and it's going to work out for me. So these are all things like I, I watch you hit. And if I could choose a swing, I, I, I always look at you and uh, Reese Hoskins for right-handed swings right now. Oh, nice. I, think yeah, I, love, so, I love Reese the swing. Yeah. yeah, I just like everything about them. I think they're kind of simple. I think you guys are able to repeat it. Your head is very still, which is awesome. That's something that I struggled with, the up and down with my head my entire career. Um, so I just noticed these things and, um, I'm, I'm happy you're joining us now, kind of letting us get in your brain a little bit. So let, let, let's start this about, up. Uh, we kind of preface it. Uh, you want to, you're in the eighth inning here, trying to get some insurance runs. You see this guy on the Hill bowling ball. I have not watched this about yet because we were going to do a different one. You said, I want to do this one. So we're going to go. Okay. Go. So first pitch here, it looks like probably setting up a way heater, I'd assume. Misses up and in. Okay. 99. 99. Yeah. No big deal. That's kind of uh, par for the course. That's what I'm thinking right now. No big deal, right? 99. And, <laughs> yeah. Over, you're, you're 0 for 3. You're like, all right, let me save my day. All right. Let me get this knock. Save here. my day here. One at bat at a time, dude. You can change your whole day in one at bat. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Second pitch here. Okay. All there's right. That's okay. his bread and butter right there. That all is right. um, nasty. That is exactly what he's trying to do it against you. He's going to throw it as hard as he can. He's going to he's going to backdoor a two seamer at a hundred miles an hour, and he's going to make you get yourself out. If, and with a guy like this, I'm betting that he can't hit that spot three times in a row. Sure, he's going to miss arm side, yes. right? Like as you saw in the first pitch, arm side up is going to be his miss, just based off his arm slot, based off how hard he throws, arm slide up. So I go into this at bat. And I may set my sights on the outer half, but I'm still expecting something down the middle. You know what I mean? Because I'm on top of the plate, and my goal this year was to get on top of the plate, pull for power, and get the ball in the air. So now that outside corner becomes sort of middle-ish for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so... Your, 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 your sights are set on outer third, maybe even the outer edge. But you know that you're not swinging that way. You're you're swinging to pull this pitch because it's gonna. You want him to miss arm side and run into your barrel. Is that what you're right. saying? Okay. Right. So one one. He's a two pitch guy. I've never faced yeah. him. Yeah. So two -pitch okay. Guy. You're you're probably thinking one one two heaters in a row off speed is it? There's a chance here. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't seen his off speed yet. I yeah. hadn't faced him yet this year. I I don't think I have an at bat against him at all. So. I was like, oh, man, I wonder what his breaking ball looks like. Is it more sweepy? <laughs> Does it have more depth? Yeah. And you watch uh, that on far, film, you know. but it's not the same. Right. You, you, you have it. to see the shape. And there it was. So that? 93, that's a slider, right? I think that might have been a, a changeup or a split. And I had basically, you know what? I Going into that set bat, I, I pretty much took that out of the picture. I'm like, all right, I'm going to sit on these. Two. You know, he's got two pitches. And I saw a fastball out of the hand. You're right. That was a changeup. Oh, dude, that was nasty. Look, Begley didn't even catch it. <laughs> no, that was middle That's of the nasty. plate. But I mean, ninety-three <laughs> with some movement. With some movement is is tough. All right, now one two. This is battle time right now. So take me th that. I mean, are you two strike approaching, or is that out the window with you? No, no, no. I I still got an approach. Um, you don't, the, have to give it, the, you don't have to give it all away, bro. I don't want you to expose no, the Mitch Garver secrets here. There are no secrets, dude. Uh, <laughs> he still has to make a good pitch. I still have to not chase a bad pitch. Um, I'm still looking over the plate, right? Because I don't want to get I don't want to get beat um, by not mm -hmm. taking my swing. So I'm not going to 
really change my swing when it gets to two strikes. If I'm going to get beat, it's going to be with my my best swing. Yeah. Basically. Um, so I'm still going to set my sights out over the plate. I'm not going to try to look in because you can't just away. Yeah. Um, and I think this might have been the pitch that I should have struck out on. Oh no, he went high heater. High heater, tough to lay off right there. Okay, so he's he's changing his sights right here. Yeah. I mean, if we're so talking about high to low, people say that all the time. Catchers say that all the time. Kind of give our audience what what that means, changing your sights. So, he just threw a ball 100 miles an hour, you know, a foot above the strike zone. So I see that pitch, and I didn't react to it. But now, after that pitch, my eyes are set, you know, almost chest level because he throws that ball that hard. The actual perceived velocity is a lot harder because it's closer to your eyes. Mm -hmm. So when you throw an off-speed pitch after that, uh, it's supposed to look ultra slow or have even more depth because you're not really sure where the bottom part of the zone is. Interesting. See, I didn't, I mean, I understand what change your eyesight means, but you're saying because when you throw a ball at that level, closer to your eyes, the perceived velocity is higher. Yes. And then if you throw that off-speed pitch after that, and it may tunnel that pitch, it may not, depending on what kind of off-speed you throw, off-speed pitch you throw, but even if it doesn't tunnel it, it's still going to have a lower perceived velocity because it's not going to be up there around your eyes. Yes, exactly. Love that. All right. So, okay. Fastball up. Change your eye level. So here comes the breaking ball. You know that as a catcher, you got to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, the breaking ball is coming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to sit on that. But look at this pitch. Dotted on the outside corner. Oh. Could have struck out. Let's go back and see. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I'm a, I'm a hitter, so I don't want to give that pitch. But, yeah, he could have rung you up. He could have. He could have. I have. Up. I have been rung up on that pitch before. Oh, and I know yeah. you have too. Yeah. So I'm. Right. I get the full count. I'm like, all right. Now you're. Out. Yeah, you're all here. The slow mo right here. It's off. It's off. Okay, it's off the plate. <laughs> all right, all three, right, two. Count. Now you're. Yeah, tell me what you're thinking right here. Uh, so full count, up by one. He doesn't want to walk the leadoff batter. Hasn't. I mean, he didn't really throw his breaking ball for a strike. I think he's going to go with his best pitch here. He's going to challenge me. Mm -hmm. He's going to throw me a heater as hard as he can on the outer half of the plate. And it's basically mono a mono right here. At this point, you've basically locked in. You know exactly what pitch is coming. In your mind, you said you went through all the scenarios, the pitches he's thrown to you. You said you can't control your breaking ball. You don't want to walk me. Give me your heater. And like you said, mono a mono. Yeah. So your best pitch versus my best swing. Exactly. And and before this pitch is even thrown, I'm going through my sequence like, all right, I'm sitting on this, you know, I'm sitting on the outer half of the plate. I'm looking for a pitch I can make contact with out front. I'm I'm basically cheating to this fastball. You know, I'm not I'm not going to try to poke one to right field. I'm going to try to drive the ball to the big part of the field and do it with my swing. So this is a direction I want my hands to go. I want my hands to go slight, just slightly right of the pitching mound. Uh, make contact out in front of the plate, get the ball in the air. Let's see it. Send up away. Oof. My yeah. goodness. We got to go back to that because and a little bit further back, to, I mean, I love seeing it again, but you talked that whole time about wanting to pull the ball off him did you get beat a little bit i don't want to say you got beat but it got a little deeper on you than you liked and you still were it, able it, to go hit it out the center because your path was good yeah it probably it probably got on me a little bit faster than i thought it was going to and i had a few of those this year where i was like all right i'm looking left center here regardless of where the pitch is and it, it may have gotten a little bit deep on me mm -hmm. and when i say deep i mean that's still going to be out in front of the plate sure but it's not going to be another ball in front of that one so i'm still making contact out front um did you find when, your, when your path was as good as it is on this swing did you find that if you were a hair out in front or if you were a hair behind you were still driving the ball to the gaps instead of maybe fouling those pitches off or, or getting jammed or something like that yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. If I'm even if I'm a little bit late here, 
it's gonna I think it's gonna be a rocket to, to right center. It's gonna yeah. be a double to right center. And if I'm a little bit earlier than this, it's gonna be a lofted fly ball to left center. But this is like this is perfect uh contact right here. I'm gonna watch it again. Sets about her half. Whack. I'll see yeah, I mean okay. I thought it got in on you a little bit, but you you barreled that ball. Yeah. You absolutely barreled that ball. And you carried the bat all the way to first base. I saw that. Right I've there. done that a few times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do you even think about that, or are you just like, that's just kind of your thing? <sighs> Chain, you know, I'm pop smiling, I'm in. Smiling, see, I'm smiling right there because I thought I struck out on the 2-2. You're like, thank you for that extra pitch. <laughs> look, at yeah. this, look at this goofball smile. Yeah. With the homies in the, in, in the dug. I love that. Yeah. So happy, dude, that we got that extra run. Huge. Huge. You got. You felt like you got a second life in that at bat. They're, they got to show some slow mos here. Let's let's check it out. Yeah, here we yeah, go. Yeah, we're gonna get a we're gonna get a side view. <sighs> I want to see the side view. There it is. It's so simple, man. I mean, I, I got to show that clip again. I think the side view is so good. You're so compact. Your hands the idea is to keep is, is just to keep that barrel tight to my head, man. If that thing gets away from my head or my hands get a little bit too stretched too far back, too much separation, I, I get blown up on that pitch. So, so keeping it tight, tight mm -hmm. to my head, uh, catching the ball out front, those are all big keys for me right there. I think everybody says the word tight to your body, and then I think people have different keys for that. So you want the barrel tight to your head. That's going to keep everything else tight as well. Um, yeah. sometimes I would think, um, my left forearm kind of tied in, um, everybody has a different key for you. It's, it's the bat, the barrel of the bat right on the head, huh? Yeah. So I, I, you know, I watch a lot of, uh, Bregman swing very, very tight. Yes. Uh, Mike, Mike Trout, the way his barrels tucked like right behind his head and he just launches from that position. Um, he's, that's he's why, incredible. you know, he doesn't, he doesn't get beat on many pitches, so. He's, his swing is very foolproof, I would say. Yes, it is. It's from time and time again, man. He's so consistent. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on and talking about this at bat. I mean, your wealth of knowledge on the topic of hitting is – it's really I, – I, I, I mean, I knew you were smart, a smart hitter, but just hearing you talk about it, I really now understand why you've been able to be so successful. Oh, dude, I love talking about hitting. I love it. I love, I love it. hearing you talk about hitting. So yeah. thanks for coming on. This at bat, we're going to have another one up. Again, Mitch Garver, Silver Slugger, 2019. Are you the best catcher in baseball? I think you Who are. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Mitchie. Yes, sir.